uh, thanks for picking up my call. Megan Thee Stallion said, Nikki, what you mad for? Megan said, Nikki mad? Mm, what I did? Who could have thunk it? <laughs> Megan is no longer fighting for the spot of number one. She wants to be the number one spot. So something tells me that Megan Thee Stallion's recent amnesia was very calculated. And it's all a part of a bigger plan. Well, let's have a conversation about it because this is Wu Chow. Woo child, listen, we got some things to talk about. Megan is out here ruffling feathers, out here succeeding, out here being in Pepsi commercials. I mean, she's about to host the VMAs. When I say Megan is working, Megan is working. Let me break it down for you, okay? And first of all, since we're talking about female hip hop, if you have not seen my Dochi reaction to Dochi's mixtape, Alligator Bites Don't Heal, it's on the Tide Ass Patreon right now. Come be a part of the Tide Ass Patreon family. We would love to have you. I don't see any other female hip hop artists, and if I had to be completely honest, okay? Not too many other female artists are working like Megan is. Yes, be it the team. Yes, be it Rock Nation. But let me tell you something. I think it's Megan Thee Stallion. I think it's the artist that the ambition, the want to be in the public eye, right? These girls are lazy. <laughs> and when I say these girls, I don't mean just biological girls. I mean like male, female, they, them. These girls out here are lazy in the industry, okay? I'm using the word girl in the more general context here, okay? A lot of these girls are lazy. You know, like you see my Beyonce's, my Gaga's, my Bruno Mars, okay? The Kendrick's, The Weeknd, girl, the Taylor Swift's, okay? Those girls be working. They do not have time for the hoopla and the ring around the roses. I really feel like this year has been a Megan Thee Stallion year. Let's start there. Ooh, Megan was always rumbling under the scenes as far as being the it girl. She's all, I mean, she has three Grammys. She has the, the accolades. She has the chart placements. She has the streams. She is one of the main girls in the storyline. Let's start there. However, comma, I think Megan said, oh, baby, this is not enough for me. <laughs> I'm not trying to be just another girl in the storyline, baby. And I felt as though Megan looked at her life and her real life and said, oh, you don't like me, you don't like me, you don't like me. T, I can use this to my advantage. I'm going to get something off my chest. And release the now iconic and very trend-starting song, Hiss. Megan was recently interviewed by Billboard, and Billboard said, girl, I want the smoke. We want to know the tea. They asked her, baby, so you think any chance of you getting back with Nicki Minaj, y'all can, you know, reconcile some things and, you know, get some things back together, maybe be just cordial? And Megan said, baby, baby, I don't know what you're talking about. What happened? Is she okay? <laughs> girl! Girl. This has got to be the funniest, but yet calculated PR response, and you ate that. Before I put my opinion and my two cents up in this gig, all I'm about to say cannot be fact, okay? It's just my opinion, this is what I think is happening. I could be making all this up in my mind, so I'm not going to just listen to the internet and just listen off of one blurb of an interview. We're about to sit right here, I'm about to share my screen, and we're going to read the Billboard questions and interview together. In real time, I have not read it yet, I don't know her answers, I don't know the questions, so me and you gonna have us our own situation right here, right now. And I'm gonna break down why I feel like all of a sudden, she doesn't remember. It's cause all you have to do is poke the bear a little more and get another response for another moment. Uh-oh. Let me share my screen with y'all right quick. All right, can y'all see? All right, I got Megan Thee Stallion's Billboard interview pulled up. I'm gonna start right at the questions because the rest, the first part was like an introduction situation. So they start off with, you began your career playing the Texas circuit and now you're an arena caliber superstar. How do your beginnings prepare you for this? The gag is this, right? Before I even get into that. The girls are very much like, you can go to an arena, girl? I don't know if you can sell out an arena. When I say she said, bitch, you wanna try me, girl? You wanna try me, Miss Ma'am? <laughs> and shut down every hater. But the thing is that has been Megan's MO really. Instead of clapping back at people, she just does something to kind of shut down all of the hoopla. So she said, it definitely taught me how to be the performer that I am. It made me understand, okay, all you gotta do is get out here and have some fun. So every time I get on stage, I'm not thinking too hard. I'm thinking like, 
I'm partying with my people. Going around my home state definitely set me up to be prepared to be comfortable with people everywhere else. And that's so good, because I remember when Megan, back in like 2018, 2017, 2018 really, when I saw her performing at like South by Southwest Girl with 50 people in the crowd, and the first 10 people in the crowd were her friends from college. You know what I mean? This was no budget, this was just good talent, good music, and something new that we have not had from female hip hop. And that's why I feel like one of the reasons why Mega said, you know what girl, I gotta get up in this gig. I cannot just be the savage girl. I need to be brand ambassador, I need to own companies, I need to be the number one rap girl in the world. So now, the girls that came before me can just be the legends that they are. Ooh, girl, do you get what I'm saying? Please let me know if you follow along, even if you're not a hottie. You get what I'm saying, right? Like, I'm not a hottie, but like, I'm hottie adjacent. I'm warm. <laughs> Man, for real, like, I really love and respect Megan's tenacity to keep going through whatever hoopla and like junk that the media and people spew about her. And she'd be like, girl, I'm about to just keep going and making bops and like keep shitting on y'all with my songs and or my videos and or my performances or my tours. And I do want to talk about Megan hosting the VMAs. That has been a topic of discussion because Nikki did it last year, right? There has been this rumor, we're going to say rumor because I don't want to get sued, and this alleged rumor that Rock Nation was the one that pulled the strings because they don't want Nikki to be able to like have this one up on Megan. Because you have to realize, right, this year, when you come out with a record like Hiss, you can no longer be cordial and or just like oh coy with miss Nicki minaj anymore you know Nicki came out and said bigfoot lying on your dead mama and megan said girl good to get into megan's law girl both of y'all have gone for each other's neck hopefully rock nation or whoever negotiated that deal did not use beyonce's name which i don't think that's true i, I don't know why we keep thinking stuff like that because beyonce is tied to jay-z rock nation and all that i don't even think that to be honest i don't think that that's their gig you know what I mean? Like, I don't think that that's their, their, they're pulling those strings. I do think, though, that they do make sure Rock Nation take care of Megan, but I don't think that they are the ones pulling the strings. If anything, I think it's Megan being like, I would love to do this. Can we make this happen? I don't think Megan is an artist that sits on her hand and just kind of wait for the universe and or the team to kind of make her decisions for her and tell her what she needs to do. I think she's very proactive and be like, girl, I gotta do what I need to do. Actually, I have this idea, we need to execute that. Can we execute that? Could we pull that actually? Though I don't think they use Beyonce's name to make sure she gets the gig to host the VMAs, I do very much believe though. Yeah, she hosted VMAs last year, but she can't do it this year, I need to do it this year. And I mean, I am that girl right now, so I need to be able to do that this year period. And it's politics to show to Nikki and her fans, but mostly to Nikki and her ego. I can take your job, honey, just like I'm taking your spot. Gag, Miss Girl. It's like a passive aggressive taunt, but like in the most best business way. Because the gag is, like Beyonce said, the best revenge is your paper. Did she lie? Just saying. <laughs> because of the pandemic, right? Hot Girl Summer was the first time you hit the road since 2019. Was the extended layoff a blessing in disguise? <laughs> she said, it wasn't a blessing in disguise. It was a blessing outright. I was so happy to see that so many people came out and sold out a bunch of these dates. People were genuinely excited to see me. Genuinely excited to see Glow. You had people like, oh, we don't know if she can sell out arenas. Bitch, ain't no question about it now. It ain't no question about it now, girl. It really ain't. Take me back to your concert at Madison Square Garden where you, Cardi B, and Glorilla shared the stage. It was a powerful moment. It was a little East Coast Southern sandwich we had going on. I was very happy. I genuinely love Cardi. I genuinely love Glow. In the industry, you really don't meet a lot of girls who want to see you be successful, okay? You meet people, and I'm not going to say girls, but you don't meet a lot of artists, okay, that want you to have success because they're scared sometimes it's going to take away from their success. Ooh, ooh, T. Music is competition. Thank you, Megan. Let's start there. Let's stop it right there really quickly. Music is competition. Music is competition. Rap is competition. Period. Okay. Ooh, ooh. I want to get into this competition really quickly right here. Music is competition, rap is competition. Stan culture has made that fact a little bit more bold and has taken it out of context a little bit because now it comes down to the streams and the numbers and like 
you know, how popular you are, right? Music is a competition in the sense of my production is better. I'm working with da 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 My flow is better. My cadence is gives better than yours, girl. You can't rhyme like me, baby. You can't deliver like me, girl. Like, these are the things that are the competition aspect. But I think that we got so lost in the numbers aspect and the fame part of it that that became, and I guess, Hold on, in some sense that is part of the competition too. However, comma though, I feel like as stand culture, we have made the fame and the numbers and the popularity contest the deem of what makes the competition successful. And that's not the tea. It's some of the tea. It may be the tea bag, but it ain't all the tea, okay? And as much as I love music and I love the music industry and I love how the music industry can be kumbaya when it wants to be, Okay. But the reality of it is music is a competition and especially when you are in a major label predicament. Oh baby, when you're a part of a major label, I'm not saying Megan is, obviously she's not, but she is a commercial artist. So you're competing against the other major label commercial artist girls. Think of it just like an investment girl. Those labels have put millions of dollars into these investments, they're gonna want their investment back. And when you're an artist signed to major labels, you have to compete with the other artists on your label. So you're not just competing with the industry, you're also competing with people in-house to make sure your stuff comes out or you could be shelved. So she says, but those two ladies, I feel like we all like to see each other do good things. We like to see each other win. Sharing the stage with people that want to see you do good and want to see them do good, it felt very uplifting. I feel like we were feeding off each other. I feel like we helped each other. Being on stage with them made me feel good because I knew we were proud of each other. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And you know, let me say this. I think Nikki made the female hip hop space so catty because that's where she came from. That's how she was introduced. That's how she was brought in. Remember the little Kims of the world, no shade, the Remy Ma's of the world. And also like Missy Elliott and like other legendary female MCs, like they didn't welcome Nicki with open arms. Also because Nicki did not give them the praise that they were looking for when, when she came in, right? Or in some other cases, it was, I think back then it was like, she just wasn't nice to be around at the time. But I do feel as though some of that can do with Nikki not being nice, but some of it also can deal with how you get brought into a situation. It's almost like when you get a new job and you are the new employee on the block, right? And you're really good at your job. You're probably one of the best employees, honestly. And you probably are better than the people that have been there. And you come in like, hey, y'all, you know, I am sickening. But like, hey, girl, you just got here. You need to just relax. You know how it would be. They want you to kiss the ring, bitch, when you first get there. Girl, I'm just trying to do my shift and go home. <laughs> I'm just trying to clock in, bitch, f you. <laughs> Say that. And I don't think it's all Nicki's fault that the female hip hop space was that catty because it was like that before she got in. I mean, look at Eve and Lil' Kim back then, bitch. They went at it, girl, okay? Look at Kim and Foxy Brown, girl. Please, girl, please. It was always like this. But I do feel as though because Nicki had the reign for so long, for 10 straight years. And I, I, you know, I don't think any other female rapper will have that type of reign. Because she had that reign like that, though, I do feel as though kiss the ring. And if you don't, okay, girl, well, I'm not letting you through. I'm not letting you through. I mean, but look at Iggy. Look at how Nikki and Iggy was. If Iggy didn't kiss the ring girl, it's a chop. And of course the fans put people versus each other and that animosity just feeds and fuels to keep going against your counterparts, girl. And never be like this friendly, kind of kumbaya, it's a sisterhood thing. So I do respect Megan being like, okay, I see what y'all have done in the past. I see what's been done to me. Cause Nikki very much carried it over to the Cardis and the Megans and the Lottos and stuff like that too, right? So it seems like Megan is like, well, if I'm gonna be the reigning girl, if I'm gonna be the new queen supreme in my kingdom, we're gonna be nice to each other. Let's start there. And that's what it feels like Megan is trying to do. Cause Megan does have her flaws too. Megan can very much be problematic. In some cases, in some cases, like even now, this, like I said, this is a little passively aggressive statement about not remembering why she's beefing with Nikki. That's a very calculated answer. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. In 2022, I spoke to QTip about you. He said people still haven't even seen her full artistry yet. Is Megan the peak of that artistry? I'm talking about her album. I still feel like I have more to give. With this album, I wanted to show people my personal interest and thoughts. I wanted to touch on my love of all things anime, which I love. Like that new video with her and my baby from BTS. Like 
Megan, oh, Megan has carved out a lane. Megan has carved out a lane in this industry that no other female artist, not even just hip hop artist, no other female artist is gonna be able to touch. No shade. Like her authentic love for anime has now crept into her mainstream artistry. And it's been always a part of her image, but like now she has really taken it to the next level. She said all things Southern, how much I like to have fun. I wanted to be myself. And I feel like I did that. A lot of people were expecting me to come on this album talking one way and I wanted to introduce myself. This version of myself that I am right now, sometimes people listen to me with ears of, I don't like her, so I don't wanna like it. The more people sit with the album and the more and the more they're like, okay, you know what? This shit bang. <laughs> and I do agree. I think that Megan's music very much is, and I've said this in my review of her album, it does need to evolve though. I do appreciate that album for reaching into her anime bag, reaching into the, the things she loves, right? And in some ways the album is still some old Megan music, you know, but I do feel like she did a really good job of introducing herself in the sense of we now see how much anime inspires her, how much anime inspires her in her artistry and or her visionary artistry um, with music videos and with her performances and the sets that she chooses and even the clothing and the hairstylings and like even her personification of anime, you know, with Megan The Stallion. You know what I mean? Like she done that. And I definitely think this album, Megan definitely introduced that for sure. On Boa, there's a bar where you say, y'all do this shit for TikTok, bitch, I'm really hip hop. I'm happy they asked about this because I was very quite concerned when Megan came out with, uh, girl, when I say I was up there, he got, Kita, we'll toss you, we'll stuck. I still can't got that dance down, girl. When that started to pop off, I very much was like, now she just came out and said, all my diamonds dancing, all you hoes do TikTok. Girl, I'm really hip hop. Why y'all hoes not clocking out? She said, nothing wrong with TikTok. TikTok is fun. It's for people to get on there and have fun. Show me what you eating. Show me how you dancing. Show me what you're doing. I feel like TikTok is happy. I don't like that answer. Uh-uh, baby, that don't answer that. That don't answer the question. Baby, you said, y'all do this shit for TikTok, bitch, I'm really hip hop. But one of your biggest songs were thriving from TikTok. That's what they really was asking here. And she kind of skated around that. Cause no shade, Miss Girl. You can't have a song that blew up on TikTok, your biggest hit from the album, okay? Blew up on TikTok. And that's why she said, I know, you know, I think TikTok is fun. Nothing's wrong with TikTok. You know, she ain't trying to ruin her relationship with TikTok as a brand, I'm sure. That don't answer the question for real, Megan. I don't want you to shade TikTok and feel like, well, you girls need TikTok when in reality, you need TikTok too, girl. <laughs> no, Megan's initial kickoff wasn't because of TikTok at all. No, not at all. She had her own, she had her own stuff going on before TikTok. However, comma, but TikTok changed your life, okay? So I really wish she would have went more into, you know what, y'all? I do feel like a lot of people make songs for TikTok and I've even had my success on TikTok, but I feel like my I do I can go deeper in hip hop than just making little TikTok bops. That's why I wish she would have said, but it's okay. But I do feel like she this was a safe PR, you know, keeping TikTok and the brand and the connection and the, the connections at TikTok, you know, safe. But like, mm -hmm, that was a good question. I wanted to know if she was gonna really go deep into that girl. They say, I say that because you're one of the biggest stars in the world. How do you still maintain that hip hop essence? She said, because I really like to rap. Where I come from, people are really freestyling. Where I come from, what I come from is hardcore rap, Southern rap. The one thing in my life that I knew I was really good at was rapping. I don't ever want to get away from that. I don't ever want to play with that. I don't ever want people to think I don't take it seriously. I'll be the rapper that is good for a bunch of verses and freestyles because that's what I like to do. Next question is, your mother, your mother Hollywood was a rapper. I didn't know that was her name. What did you learn from her skill-wise? Just that attitude. My mama was feisty. She had a lot of aggression in her rap voice. And because in her nature, she was naturally an aggressive woman, she sold it. I feel like the main thing for me is always selling it. Making sure who I am comes through in my voice when I'm rapping. You're not going to believe what I'm saying if I don't deliver it strong. My delivery lets people know that I'm strong. That's very true. And I say this about Megan's cadence and her delivery. Like I said, I think Megan's cadence is it can be frustrating because he wants something else and it is rough, it is aggressive. And like I said, it is very, he wanna, he wanna, he wanna, woo! Girl, 
I know. I know, girl. But like, it is a part of her brand. What was it like when you received Pimp C's verse, which was used on paper together while in the studio with your producer, Little Jew Made the Beat? He said, she said, we both cried. Like, oh my God, I can't believe we got this verse. I love Pimp and Jew love Pimp. And we share the same love of Southern rap. Pimp C made me feel so gangster. Made me feel so cool. To have my voice on a song with my favorite rapper ever, an unreleased verse? Motherfuckers ain't walking around with Pimp C verses. And I got blessed with one. They also said, I heard you're sitting on more unreleased Pimp C verses. She say, I mean, we might have more stuff. It's more stuff in the chamber, but I want to keep Pimp C alive. Not saying he's not alive. His wife, Chin Ch Ch Chinara, keeping it alive. <laughs> His children keeping it alive. People in Texas keeping it alive. I really want people to know who the fuck Pimp C is. As much as I get to put his voice on wax, I will. Love that. And this picture is stunning. I love, oh, she looks so good. Oh, she's talking about Warner Music in this interview. I love that. See, this is why you got to read, y'all. You can't just listen to the internet and just be like, oh, she's talking about this. Sometimes you got to go read it yourself because I didn't know she was talking about this Warner Music stuff. I'm actually very interested in this. They asked, you've said that your relationship with Warner Music Group is based on trust. How has the label provided its trustworthiness? She say, they ain't told me no yet. They did exactly what they said they was going to do. Everybody that I work with there, we're on calls together all the time talking about how we feel like we could make the partnership better. Everybody's been so cool and they're so easy to work with. They're just nice at Warner. She's giving these very bland PR answers though. If I had to be honest. I'm not expecting her to tell us her business, but like I do want a little bit more. You know what I mean? Like, I would like to know, like, you know, how does it feel that you're independent and, like, you're using Warner as a distribution and, like, how does that set your business apart from being with a label? You know what I mean? Like, well, maybe we're going to go into it. Let me keep reading. Very few artists can say that they got their masters before they turned 30. Why was that a priority for you? Oh, my gosh. She has her masters. She owns all her masters, girl. T. T. She said, I've been fighting for my freedom my whole rap career. I couldn't just take no for an answer. I don't ever want to be in a situation where somebody got their foot on my neck ever again. <laughs> okay. You got to do things to make yourself be your own boss. That's true. That's really, really true. Really, really true. Okay, beautiful. The next question is about being an independent artist because I'm like, girl, please get into that tea about being independent with Warner Brothers and everything. How has it been navigating that road as an independent artist? She say, being independent is hard. When you got a label that does everything for you, all you got to do is wake up and be the celebrity. That's a very easy life. I do work as my own label. I do fund a lot of my own things. There are a lot of things I'm still learning as I go. This shit is not just handed to me in my lap. I really got to go figure out. I really got to go figure out, okay, now I'm doing it by myself. Not that I'm doing it only by myself, but I'm in positions to be my own boss. So I got to figure out how to be the boss and how to be the employee. It's tough. But I like figuring it out. I like doing things on my own. I like working. I'm not going to stop. The more I know, the better I'll get. Now, I like that answer. That was good. And she does like working. And that's what I said in the beginning of this call. She loves working. Megan is working better and more than these other girls. That's why she's getting the award of Best Female Hip Hop Artist of the Year. That's why. Or was it best uh, hip hop artist of the year in general? And like I said, it's definitely because I know she wants to take Nicki's spot of being the queen supreme in the sense of this. And let me and let me preface this, by the way. It's not because she wants to be Nicki. And I don't even think it's all about Nicki, to be honest. If I had to be completely honest, it's not even all about Nicki for real. Nicki's just the hurdle. Oop. Ooh, child. You hear what I'm saying? Nikki's just the hurdle, the obstacle that I have to get through to get to that spot that she does have, that Nikki does have. And let me also preface this too. Nikki can never be stripped of her title of being the number one female hip hop artist of all time. The history has already been written and already been made. Okay, so that's just that. However, comma, there is time and there's opportunity for a new queen supreme girl that we do need another main girl in the history books and megan's run this year no shade is going to be in the history books megan's music videos are going to be in the history books megan's run and her career so far is going to be in the history books so she just wants to reach for that pinnacle where she's going to be undeniably a icon a legend in the music industry world and also in the female hip-hop world it's really not really much to do with nikki yes beefing with nikki is one thing but to be honest that's not the full scope of everything it's just only the hurdle 
to be honest. You've been so open about your love for Japanese culture, especially anime. As a black creative, how influential has it been on you? I really like the storytelling anime. The thing that resonates with me while watching a lot of the anime I like is watching the character development. Seeing the character go from nothing to everything. When I feel like I'm getting beat up in life, I remember some of my favorite characters. I see that they had to go from little, literally zero and getting their ass whooped in their training. Even when they start popping and getting their muscles, because you know, they be all skinny as hell. They start getting a little ripped. Even when you start seeing that the character is getting a little swole, you like, all right, he's going to feel all oh, you. Even after getting his ass whooped, because you got to fall down a few times, the character doesn't get discouraged. They always like, all right, I may have to go get my ass whooped, but I'm going to get back up and watch how I come back 20 times stronger. I resonate with that. No matter how many times I get knocked down, I never feel like I'm going to quit. I just need to get better. I need to get back, try again, train harder, go harder so I can keep evolving into my best self. She's going to, and like I said that, Megan's going to evolve into a girl. That music is going to be sitting somewhere else, okay? Ooh, when you did Pressure Licious with Future in 2022, you paid him 250K for a verse and said you treat your features like a business. Why and how? She say, when you cool with somebody, you should support their business. You shouldn't ask them to do nothing for free because you cool with them. Just because your homie got a clothing line, that don't mean he got to give you clothes for free. Like, support your friend. Don't expect anyone to give you something just because we cool. That's how I treat my artist friends. I'm not asking you to do nothing for free. I wouldn't come to your house and take all your food out of your house and invite you to my house. And it's like, oh, what? Just much as I give, I receive. I just feel like it's a back and forth thing. I just want them to know I really respect what they do. I'll go all out for myself. I splurge on myself. I love myself. I love what I do. And I want everything to look right. I want everything to be right. I feel like we're going, I feel like you're going to take me seriously once I let you know this is not a favor. I'm asking for this. Period. And face card is on, baby, okay? Listen, I think you started this competitive rap energy when we seen in 2024 you when you released Hiss. Do you feel like you're the reason MCs are rapping competitively again? I would like to think that I started things. I don't know. I just knew what I had to do and what I had to say. And if it opened up the door for everyone else to get shit off their chest, well, I'm glad. That was a very humble, humble yet. My titties are big ass answer, bitch, okay? You took shots at Nicki Minaj. Is there any chance for you guys to reconcile or even another collaboration in one day? <laughs> she say, I still to this day don't know what the problem is. I don't know what could be reconciled because to this day, I don't know what the problem is. <laughs> Megan, that was, but you know what? Megan, in my mind, is trying to get a response out of Nikki again. For sure. That's poking the bear. To, to play coy, to play like, oh my God, I don't even know what they're talking about. Girl, you know exactly what the problem is. I mean, start back with uh, Hot Girl Summer. When, you know, y'all did the record and, you know, she alleged that you made her drink while you while she was pregnant. We don't know behind the scenes what happened, but definitely something happened between making that record with Nikki with Hot Girl Summer and Tadala San and then WAP. Something between there, behind the scenes, happened. I don't know what it was. Don't know what happened. Why y'all don't, you know... It went very mute behind the scenes, child. And then, girl, y'all came out with not living for each other. Nikki just take a shot at you every time she can. I honestly would have respected Megan more if she would have been like, girl, let me tell you something. She's just mad because I'm, take, I'm, 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 I'm number one. Next question. <laughs> and I say this to say, like, if Megan actually really took it there, because y'all have already said disrespectful things to each other. Y'all already taking shots. I, like, I mean, literally in Boa, she's like, girl, look who's son and who. You know what I mean? Like, girl, look at you. Like, girl, I made you spiral, girl. You tired. Get your time's up. Why are you not clocking out? You know, like, Megan's already saying the things to Nikki. Like, so I would have expected her in an interview to be like, well, girl, here's the tea. This is why I feel like this and this is what I mean. And like, girl, if you're mad about it, oh, well, moving on, next question. You know, I, would've, I wish Megan would've gave me that, but it's fine. Does being the face of female rap for the next 10 years drive you? Is that something that you want? She say, I just wanna rap. I just wanna be Megan Thee Stallion. I just wanna rap for as long as I can. Oh. She said, I don't even want that. 
then am I wrong? I guess I'm wrong. I guess I'm wrong. According to this interview, she just said, I just want to rap. I just want to be Megan Thee Stallion. I just want to rap for as long as I can. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I don't know why I don't believe that. But like, that's a me thing. Because she said what she said. And I'm going to take what she said. Because she said what she said. But it's just something about the, the way she's moving. And the way that the business moves are moving. That I just, I don't know if I would completely believe that. You know? Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to take your word for it, though. After he made some inappropriate comments about you last November, Shannon Sharp apologized. Do you feel like you've been getting more support from black men over the last few years, or is it something you're still looking for more of? She said, at this point in my life, I really don't care. Maybe if you would have asked me this a last year or two years ago, I would have wished I had more black people, more people, more black people in, in general in my corner. It would have felt nice to be protected by some black men in this instance. But the more I wasn't getting it, the more and more I realized I wasn't going to get it. Who should feel safe and important at the end of the day is me. And I was going to have to make myself feel that way. I wasn't going to find it in people I don't know at all. <laughs> now I don't care. As long as I make myself feel happy, then that's what matters to me. Period. 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 I've seen a lot of black men rapping your lyrics at your shows. That must be dope feeling. She said, because we actually are going the hardest right now. The women are killing it right now. We are the hardest MCs right now. We're going harder than the boys for sure. Absolutely. Y'all been going harder than the boys. Ooh, this pick. Ooh, bitch. Yes. Uh-huh. That's how I feel. I feel like this picture. That's how I feel. So yeah, that was Megan Thee Stallion's interview. There were some other questions uh, about like her personal life as far as like her claiming uh, like what was this, this last one how you feel about in your selfish era um, and then she talked about Kam uh, Ka uh, Kamala Harris she did say to be alive in a lifetime where a black woman or a woman at all could be president I feel so blessed this is what the future is about we really about to get a strong black female in there I feel like America needs a woman to come in here and put a woman's touch on it she's not lying it's been going a little crazy lately and we need somebody to put their foot down I feel like Kamala she's gonna do that Oh, I love this. I love this interview. This was a really good interview. You know, even though some of the answers, I ain't gonna hold you, still very felt, very PR, very like, now, nah, Megan, girl, you couldn't, y'all, girl, you could have went in. 2024 has been amazing for you. I think 2025 is gonna be sickening for you. I cannot wait to see what she does at the VMAs. And like she said, she just wants to rap. She just wants to be Megan Thee Stallion. And she just wants to rap as long as she can, as long as people care. And that means the world to me. And that's a very pageant answer because I still do still feel like she's like, bitch, I do want to be the face of, of female hip hop and I want to like really be that girl, like the girl. You know what I mean? I feel like Megan's going to run her kingdom a little differently than a Nicki or like the girls that brought in Nicki and the little Kims, like that bitterness and that like, Ugh, I don't want the new girls to be uh, succeeding. I don't, I don't want the new girls to be there. I think that Megan is like, actually... I'm going to be that girl because of my talent, because I know can't nobody else produce what I produce. Now, if that makes me the number one girl, fine, but I'm not going to alienate myself from the rest of these girls that are really talented and really have their shit going on. And if I can be friends with them, if we can collaborate and make bigger moments, then why not? And that's where Megan's going to win. Megan's going to take it. Megan's going to win and take it if she continues that path. I love that. So yes. Yes, Megan's doing the VMAs, and yes, it is a little shady, and yes, some things are calculated, but like, that's business. And like she said, music is competition. Rap is competition. And that's why you gotta read, ladies and gentlemen. You gotta read some inner, you gotta read the print. You gotta read the print, girl. Because even though if we, if we just took the headline of her not knowing what Nikki, you know, what the beef is with Nikki, I do think there's just a bigger picture than her saying, I don't know why Nikki is mad. Yes, that is funny, and yes, it is passively aggressive. It is. But there's a bigger picture there. If she would have gave Nikki ammo in this interview, I don't think it would have hit harder if it was a song, if it was a verse. Because if Nikki come out and come for Megan, and Megan responds with another verse, then we got a show. But I will say this, and I will leave it with this. I don't know what it is, but it doesn't seem like Megan likes to go hard with Nikki. Like, it seems like... Megan is just not going to fully call out Nikki. But also on the flip side, it seems like Nikki is just like paying it with Megan now. Like, girl, let, let her have it. Let her have it. Let her have it. Let this little girl do what she gonna do. But I really do wish, I really do wish, like if these girls really gonna go at it, 
Like, I really wish we got, like, a full battle royale between these two. And not, like, just diss records. Like, I really wish it was, like, like, I don't know. I kind of wish they could go freestyle bar for bar. Like, some old school cypher shit. Like, that would be so cool. All right, Tyler's Army. I love y'all for picking up my call. As always, let me know in the comments below what you guys think about this Megan situation. Do you think Megan wants to be the face of female hip-hop secretly, for real, for real? And do you think she's moving very calculated and for a bigger purpose? Or do you think she just wants to rap, call it a day? I just don't want to be here. I just want to be here making my music. That's all. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. And are you excited for Megan to host the VMAs? All right, Tyler's Army. I love y'all so much for picking up. And I will call y'all back real soon. Bye, Army.